Hello, my name is Turan Purti and today I'm going to talk to you about We Observe Open Data Challenge and we are team Sarjom that is working on a platform called Citizen Science Earth. Our submission branch is also listed below. Uh, so our team consists of me, uh, Turan Purti, I am a UX research designer. Uh, we have Kiran Me as the tech lead uh, and Anandir Pandey as the backend engineering open source contributor. We also have Vignesh Misal who is working on the front end engineering and we have Ashish Anand who is the product manager for our platform. In this presentation, we will go over the following topics. We will present the problem statement, we will show a concept and a demo of the solution and we will make recommendations for future sustainability. So the problem statement that we are attempting is that how can we make citizen science data sets accessible and easy to use across a diverse set of projects. The themes that we are trying to address is engaging young people on open data and climate through education. We are creating an open source infrastructure for data in interoperability across different projects. And we also have an option for uh, citizen science volunteers to get attributions whenever their data sets are published. Our solution targets these five areas of United Nations Sustainable Goals, which is quality education, industry innovation and infrastructure in terms of open source digital infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities because we are creating a platform to engage student communities across the university in the world. And uh, making that collaboration happen will lead to a community action towards climate change. And our goal is to make as many partnership as possible to make uh, this project a success. Uh, so we took the we observed data sets and some of the issues that we found were that they were varying data structures, varying formats and varying sizes. And we wanted to provide a possible solution through normalizing data structures, processing different data formats and limiting file size for quick analysis. As you can see across all these different projects, a CSV file is the most common. And hence we decided to come up with an open source tool called SITSI data manager to effectively manage data files and metadata of citizen science projects. Uh, we have used the grow big data file and we are trying to select a few columns from different data sets and, and join a few columns to create a custom uh, data set file. Uh, this uh, tool would be hosted on our platform, which will also host a lot of other open source tools, data sets and technologies for environment that can empower citizen science volunteers uh, give them an option to publish a data story either in map or time series. Volunteers have the option to get attributions and organization can host quick samples of the data sets for, for analysis. Uh, our technology architecture looks like this. Uh, we have three layers, front-end application and back-end. There are uh, authentication email services and the deployment is currently frozen because we also have to build a lot of other features uh, beyond the we observe uh, uh, challenge. Uh, we have used Python, Flask, and MongoDB for, for, for this application. Uh, and uh, uh, the reason for selecting MongoDB was because there was a diversity of projects and every project has a different data structure. Additional services were used from Amazon Web Services and the repository is currently licensed through uh, GNU Public Version 3. Uh, additional uh, big data processing tools uh, such as Databricks and Apache Spark was used to process the 15 G GB big data file. Now I'm gonna uh, take you to a quick demo that our tech lead uh, Kiran May talks about when we use our platform to merge uh, the big data CSV file of GROW with uh, the weather data picked up from National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. The GROW soil data set along with weather data set is initially, are initially analyzed and pre-processed uh, to support the development of CSV data manager. The uh, data sets are stored on S3 and analysis is done using Databricks notebook. Initially, the grow locations data and the, and, and the weather data and the time series data are read from S3. To join the locations data with the time series data, the S3 reading type and the type column is split into reading type and the air temperature battery level are extracted. The time series data is read from S3 and then these two tables are joined based on the serial number and the reading type. And then to uh, join this data set with the weather data set uh, as the as the locations of the weather stations and the sensors are not identical we have calculated the distance between the two locations and then join the data set by calculating the nearest uh, nearest station nearest weather station from the sensor 
But in order to do that, we have extracted the uh, distinct uh, data points, uh, latitude and long longitude. Uh, if we do the process on all the duplicate records, it will be an expensive process. So we have extracted the uh, distinct locations and then uh, whether data set is read, even in the weather set, data set, the distinct latitude and longitude points are extracted. And then using GeoPandas, uh, we have uh, calculated the, the shortest uh, nearest station uh, nearest stations. Uh, on this map, we can see that the red uh, points are the sensors and the white points are the weather stations. And based on this nearest station, uh, based on this uh, nearest station is calculated and based on this nearest station, uh, the two data sets are mapped. And uh, in order to map the uh, weather data set with in order to map the weather data set with time series data set, we have split the timestamp column in time series into date and then join the two data sets uh, based on the nearest station and then the date. And then finally, the ma mapped file is uploaded to S3. Now let us go to the demo of the CSV data manager. This is our home page. In order to show the data set and process the data, the user needs to click the collect data. Once it clicks, they'll be redirected to the login page. And after logging in, they need to create, they'll be redirected to the dashboard. Here, in order to upload the data set, they need to click on upload or host data. And then they need to uh, create a project. This must be a unique project name. So I'm giving this just zero one. And then after clicking next, here and in this page, they can upload uh, raw data files like images, or images, or voice, or MP3s. Uh, for now, we are supporting only images, and the file size must be less than two GB. For now, I am skipping the screen. And then here is the uh, here they could uh, upload metadata files. For now, we are uploading CSV data, and uh, here I am choosing. Uh, for now, we are supporting only CSV data, and I am uploading the row. Uh, locations data set with, uh, with, the, with the data set. Here I have uh, selected only sample data as we support only files until 2 GB. Uh, after clicking on next, the user will be directed to a page where uh, the table names, the table names and the respective columns are, are displayed. In order to uh, join the tables, like they have to select the columns in this location and and the join column must be selected here but now i am selecting these columns and i'll be joining these two tables based on the station and station name after this they need to click on done after clicking on done the user will be directed to a thank you page as processing the data sets take some time uh, it, it will usually take uh, time based on the size of the uh, data sets and the user will receive an email with a unique code using the unique code the user can access the data set and then use it for further analysis after the file is processed we get this email and if we click on the link we can access the file here is the file that's joined based on the columns we selected and the common join column so that was a quick demo uh, uh, and we have a longer demo on our youtube channel but i will go ahead and talk more about that uh, we can develop this concept in a month with two weeks of data analysis and research and two weeks of programming and implementation and currently it uploads only two csv files and it is limited to two gigabytes of storage um, who benefits from it? Uh, there are researchers, climate change in, uh, and environment, citizen science volunteers, government and policy makers, amateur enthusiasts who are interested in climate change and citizen science data, and student community across the world to whom we will provide access. Uh, the benefit of this is that it saves crucial time and effort lose that is lost in data cleaning. Researchers can then spend more time in data analysis. Um, it makes data sets across projects easily accessible and opens up avenues for collaboration and civic engagements. Attributions can be provided to data contributors in compliance with GDPR and California uh, Privacy Act. And it also trains the next generation of students about climate change. 
uh, we aim to uh, sustain as a not-for-profit organization that collaborates with research agencies and policy organizations to create open source projects that university students can participate in state, national, international competitions. We have current partners here in NSF uh, at UW. Uh, we have course project and Vashon Nature Center. We are collaborating with anecdata.org, which is again a platform developed by a lab in Maine. Uh, potential grants we are targeting are from uh, National Geographic, NSF, and Mozilla Open Source Support Grant. And our target for next quarter are potential collaborations with university research labs in the European Union, India, and China. And we want to thank you, uh, the GROW Observatory and the Open Data Challenge for the data sets, as well as the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for providing the weather data. Our vision is to create sustainable and collaborative technologies for the environment, and our, uh, we want to achieve this mission uh, vision by uh, our mission of driving community action for climate change. Uh, some of the wireframes that uh, we have developed are like eventually like this so prototype will look like this. Uh, this will be the dashboard. Uh, this will be the create project page. This will be the upload raw data, uploading map data, and a lot of uh, front end interactions will develop uh, on how we can manage the mapping of um, metadata. And finally, uh, the success screen that was shown earlier. Thank you, everyone.